Now you can see that I've cut out the face, the hair and the elements of the jacket and I've got enough cutting done there for the whole of the image. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of the photograph and I'm going to start adding colour. I'm going to make a significant change or a deep step in the genesis of my image or the development of my image. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go File, Save As and I'm going to call this version 4 and you see that every time I make a new version of my image, every time I undertake a new area or a new significant step in my image, I save out a different version. And the reason I do that is that that means I can always go back to a previous version and I can see how it develops and if I want to I can take it another way. So that as well as being able to undo within the open file, on another session I can go back and work on a previous version. And if I give it a simple numbering naming convention, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc, I never get confused which, came, which image came before which. So I would say to you, a really good idea is to be simple, straightforward and logical in the way you work with your images. So now we're on version 4, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the photographic Im image, I'm going to drag that down into the bin on the layers palette, so I've just got the artwork that's left there. But, as I'm being cautious and disk space is cheap, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer, the artwork layer, and I'm going to work on it and change its colours, but I'm going to keep another copy just in case I want to go back and change something in it. So there's a number of ways you can do it. With it selected in the layers palette, you can go up to the little menu here and you can choose Duplicate Layer, which is Duplicate Artwork Layer, it gives it the name of the, the layer you're working on, or the shortcut that I always use is to drag it down onto the New Layers button. And I'm going to rename this one here and call it Original. Right. So now I've got that, I then turn the eye off and it's locked. I want to go into the artwork copy layer, take the lock off, select all the colour on it, all the artwork on that layer, and I'm going to change the colour. So I'm going to go over to my colour swatch on the toolbox, double click and get the colour picker up. The colour picker divides into three parts. So I've got white to pure colour to black hair. The colours of the rainbow, so I can choose what area of colour I want to be working in, over here. And then I've got my current colour, which will then become down here, and then my new colour that I pick. So I'm going to pick, say, a brownish colour, there like that, and click OK. So now all of my artwork, if I just click off it, is selected brown. Okay, So I can rename this layer brown. And again, it's a good idea to be very simple, descriptive, and simplistic about um, the layers that you're working with in the name so you don't get confused. Let's go and click on the original layer here which is still invisible because we turned the eye off. Click on a new layer and let's draw a box. Now Illustrator will colour new artwork the same colour as the last colour you picked. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to make it a sort of red colour and let's just draw a box like that. Now when I click off Let's just press V for the black arrow and click off. We've got that red colour. I think that red is a little too dark toned. It jumps against the, the, the brown. So I'm going to click to the, the right of it on the circle of that layer. And then I'm going to make that a little bit lighter in tone. So let's just take it up to there. And that works much better. Okay, so I'm now going to call this red. I'm going to create a new layer above it and I'm going to lock red and I'm going to lock brown so I can't inadvertently um, select those and now I'm going to go over and select a tool that some of you will find a little more demanding and challenging to work with. This is the pen tool. The shortcut for the pen tool is P. You can see it here, pen tool and then I'm just going to draw a shape point to point using the contours of the brown layer to hide where I make my points. Let's just cut it and we'll have it um, maybe around there and then around here, around the neck. <coughs> Being careful not to knock anything over as we go along. And we'll go around here and join up the first point with the last so we get a shape. Now at the moment that's still coloured that pink colour so I'm going to go down to the colour picker and I'm going to make it a lighter colour there. 
and click off. And now we've got a colour for his face, um, which is separate from the colour for his um, the background. Now it might be that that's the wrong colour, it's too um, bright or too light, we can change that by clicking to the right of it here, again to select the artwork on that layer, double clicking on the colour picker, maybe dropping that down a tone there like that, if we want to do that. And we could go on and we could create another sub layer here, get the pen tool, shortcut for that is P, let's change this colour down here and make it a bit darker, and let's draw another Layer here, and you'll see the pen tool fills from the first point to the last point as you go round and you draw some shapes. So you have to think what your finished shape is going to look like overall. Let's deselect that by clicking on the first and the last one there. And now we've got a coloured lino cut which is progressing quite nicely. So we can move around and we can change colours, and at any time we can select the overall colour of a layer. And we can say, well, let's just change that brown there. Let's, un let's lock these two layers, unlock that one, and let's change the brown colour. Let's make it a dark blue and see what that looks like. So it's quite quick and easy and immediate to change the colour values and to change the image that you've got. And it may be that I want to change the jacket there to stop that being pink. And I would like to make the highlights a different colour. So to do that, I will click on this layer, make a new layer, choose a lighter colour blue for example say there, P for the pen tool and just draw a shape that's going to cover all of the bits that I want to be blue, light blue as opposed to the dark blue there. Deselect it and now we've got, he's got a light blue jacket or dark blue jacket with light blue detailing and a sort of orangey yellow face on a pink background. Those may or may not be the colours that you want, but you can always chop and change and move them around. And that's how you can create a coloured woodcut effect. In the next video, we'll look and see how you can add some more advanced features, such as a wood grain.